All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I am Zach Underwood. Um, I y'all have likely seen me running around here with my head cut off. Um, the talk is how to automate at Linux Fest, specifically this one. Um, so this is going to be a, um, somewhere between an overview and a deep dive into the systems that we use. Um, it is mostly open source, not exclusively, mostly. Um, about me, South Carolina native, born in the upstate, um, got 10 plus years IT experience, everything from general IT admin, Linux admin, and right now, um, network engineer for a managed Wi-Fi company. So we do, um, because they did sponsor the equipment, it is White Sky Communications. We do managed Wi-Fi for student housing, multifamily, and senior living, um, whatever that term is supposed to mean. Um, basically, we go into the property, we bring in a large fat pipe, 10 gig, 40 gig, or 100 gig into the property, and then put um, APs typically in every unit. Um, and we're doing about 200 installs this year alone. Um, I got a um, Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator for versions 5, 6, and 7, and an RHCE for version 6. Unfortunately, I have not touched rail much since version seven. Um, I have not touched eight or nine. Um, my day, my go-to uh, Linux box now is Ubuntu for my own personal stuff. Um, what services do we offer here? Um, it's actually quite a bit. Um, yes, it is the network, it is the Wi-Fi. Um, we bring in our own um, coax connection from Charter. Um, it's 940 by 35 or 40 up, um, and we have been in this hotel since 2014 and have brought in our own connection every year. Um, this year it's actually not bad. It was 100 install and 160 for the service. So that's, that's a lot for event internet. That is really good pricing. Um, so what do we do? We record, and for this year, um, we live stream all talks. Um, this year was the first year that we um, live streamed. In past years, um, Noah has done the audio from some of the sessions as a live stream. Um, we provide a speaker light, and after the session is over, you're welcome to come take a look at it. It is a wooden box. Uh, that is sitting up front, and um, I'll go into a little more details about that. We have um, cameras that are mounted over all the doors. Um, if you look back, you can see one right there. And it looks straight down, and um, it has a line driven, um, drawn on it, and it will detect as people enter the room to give us an idea of roughly how many people attended each talk. Um, we have the vote boxes. Um, as you leave, which the idea for this came from a visit to IKEA. Um, in IKEA, both the restrooms and the exit, they just have a simple three buttons you press. Great, great experience, neutral, and a negative experience. And that's the only feedback they want, in, and that sprung the idea of that would be a great feedback mechanism for us. Um, and we offer, of course, the event-wide Wi-Fi. This year it is all Ruckus equipment, Ruckus APs, data plane, Cisco switches, PFSense, firewall. Um, we had the LAN party area, which um, was quite busy last night particularly. The event-wide information displays, due to some issues, we were not able to actually deploy those this year. And of course, um, monitor the whole network um, as a whole to gain um, statistics for future planning. The, the backbone of our automation is Node-RED. It is a um, uh, Java, uh, Node.js application um, that sits, um, that's been built up. And the beauty and the reason I like it is it allows for easy stitching of various components. Um, instead of having to write code to transport variables between functions like you would in Python. You just draw a line and it will export the output of that node into the input of the other node. So here, um, this start section is it's just a loop timer. So every 20 seconds it fires it again. 
um, and then um, it triggers the database lookup, which will match the current time with the um, time that is in the database for the start of the session, and then trigger the next action. Um, and all of the speaker information is in a MySQL database. Um, and for messaging, we use um, MQTT, um, which is a messaging protocol. Think of it as a bit of a bulletin board. You can either post to it or you can subscribe to it. And so in the case of the speaker lights, they have made a subscription to a specific topic within the um, MQTT and the automation system will post a message onto the, um, the messaging server saying this light with this topic turn on or turn off and it is near real time um, fast enough that y you don't really notice a delay between the command executing and the in this case the light flashing the vote box is also using MQTT Um, so the database, um, I wanted the um, database, specifically the time function, to be something that is human readable without executing queries. So it is not an epoch time. Um, the downside of doing the format this way is I have to specify the date format in every single query. Um, and so it was, it was real fun debugging that to make sure it it, the same format is used in every location, but this information I get from when you do the speaker registration, it is a Google Sheets backend to the form. And so I then bring that Sheets in to, it, it happens to be Excel in my case, um, as a CSV. And then I um, will update the times. Um, I have to strip out some um, um, special characters that get stripped out so that you don't bonk my database. Um, and then I load it into the database. If you do try to do anything like Johnny's drop tables, um, I, I use, I reuse the database every year. So if you bonk the database, I just re-import it. Uh, because I'm starting, I'm the database starts fresh every year. And so this actually, this year's talk, some of this year's talks, um, and you can see in the date format that I put a T between it, um, just, just to make it nice, easy, human readable stuff. Um, recording the sessions. So we use a small form factor desktop um, that we got um, actually a really good deal from a local computer shop near me. They had decommissioned the county's workstations. And so these are HP desktops about yay big. Um, it's maybe eight, 10 inches square. Uh, they got an i7 um, quad core hyper-threaded. Um, but the biggest feature and the reason we got them um, is they had USB 3. Um, we got these in the run up to 2020. Um, so they were like late 2019. We paid $150 after tax for each one. Um, and now it didn't have a hard drive, but it did have eight gigs of RAM. Um, so we just dropped a hard drive in it and called it a day. Um, the desktop runs OBS, um, and then we use a um, WebSockets plugin. Um, it's the one linked here. If you are using OBS 28 or newer, this WebSockets plugin is already embedded in it. Um, but for whatever reason, Jeremy put an older version of um, OBS on it that did not have it already in it. Um, my ability to interact and program with the automation system is somewhat limited. And one of the issues I was having was getting Node-RED to speak to a WebSockets API. Um, I, I couldn't, but what I could do is use their, their Python um, example, modify it, and so Node-RED calls Python, and Python actually does the WebSockets connection. Um, ideally, in the future, I would like to get that all native and eliminate all the glue scripts, um, but that is what we have right now. Um, 
And then OBS writes out to an NFS share um, so, so that it's all on a central location. Um, actually, the, all the talks today or all the talks this weekend take up less than 10 gigs. I, I was expecting a lot more um, video than, than we actually get. And one of the other limitations when I implemented of the WebSockets API is it did not read back what file it was writing out. So I had no way of knowing which file OBS was actually writing. Um, and so I had to do um, some bash hackery to use, um, L, was it LSOF, list open files, and um, do some cuts to get down to the just the file path I'm using. Again, it's hackery. I want to eliminate it one day, but it's there now. It does work. Um, and then for the HDMI capture, we use Magwell USB 3 capture devices. Well, they have been really solid. Um, PoE cameras, you can see it um, sitting on the block of wood in front of Brian. Um, and that is to capture the speaker in this case. Um, and then um, a uh, Behringer um, audio capture device. So from the audio mixing board, we have a single input that goes towards OBS. And so the mixing board, we can use it to actually mix with. Um, I have a special note and a hatred for Apple um, when trying to do this. Some apples will negotiate um, DHCP, which is copy protection on HDMI, with the projector. When this happens, it blocks the it blocks the magwells from being able to capture the displays. Um, we had one or two speakers that that came up um, this year, and fortunately, the analog loophole is still there. So we go from the computer from the presenter's laptop to something VGA, then VGA to HDMI, and then it will work. Um, we use the VGA to strip out the copy protection. Um, and after the session is over, um, this part does not work right now. Um, we, we have run into this, and I have not figured out how to get around it. The way YouTube's quota system works is a upload counts so many credits and with the quota we can get five and a half videos uploaded before we um, before our quota ends for the day and we have to wait for the next day so um, that was one of the things that didn't get uh, re-implemented this year so I'll have to be hand uploading that um, we will also be uploading unfortunately by hand also to Internet Archive Again, that is one of the things on the to-do list to get working for next year. Uh, live streaming. So again, this is the first year we've done proper live streaming. Um, we got, uh, we partnered with Noah um, to do that, and he provided us with um, four unique um, RMTP uh, destinations, and um, we start the live stream in the morning and it stays running until the last talk and at which point it's killed. Um, and um, so far that process has been incredibly reliable this weekend. Uh, the only hiccup has been getting audio into OBS, but it seems once audio is into OBS, it runs pretty good. And then um, Noah's streaming service takes care of that, um, about rebroadcasting it. And we then, um, Jeremy then embeds those streams onto the remote attendee page. Um, and I do hope to have all the videos at a minimum on YouTube within the next two weeks. Speaker lights. So this is what I was talking about. Um, one of the staff members, Shay, he has a laser cutter. So he cut out these nice little wooden boxes with the laser cutter. Um, and then inside, it's got just three simple lights. Um, red, green, and yellow. And then these are based off of the Node MCU ESP. Um, it's about an $8 board. It does Wi Fi, it runs ESP Home, and it speaks MQTT. So, all in, we got less than um, at least of the electronic parts. We got less than 20 bucks to build each speaker light. I'm not sure how much Shay has to, has to pay for the, the wood, wood stock, but I imagine it's not that expensive.
And um, next is the people counter. Um, it is not open source software. It is proprietary. It is paid. It's uh, from a company called Camlytics, Camera An Analytics. Um, and here is a screenshot taken from one of the ballrooms. And you can see that you just draw a little line on the floor. And then um, in another, wi another window, you then set the direction that you want to count in, whether you want to count coming in and going out or just coming in. Um, the software is actually really cool. Um, some of the other features that it has is um, you can set lingering. So if someone lingers too long in an area, it will send an alert to like security to go check out. Um, you can do abandoned bags. So the camera can detect if someone dropped a bag and left it. Um, it can do counting of cars. So you can put one of these on a driveway and count and distinguish between cars and automotives and and like animals. Um, it can do line queuing. So if you get, um, you can draw a line that says if um, if the queue for the cash register gets past this point, to send an alert to someone to go at maybe open another register or something like that. Um, it has a JSON um, HTTP API that Node Red will consume. Um, it consumes the JSON API, then there is a node within Node Red that will strip the giant JSON into individual messages to be processed one at a time. And um, it fires every five minutes and um, doesn't seem to lag any. Um, and, and but it does also Windows only software. Yes. 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 Um, all site, all services are hosted on site. Um, on servers here. Um, the only thing we um, are uploading right now is just general internet traffic. Um, and so here is a little bit, a screenshot from the people counter. So you can see this was taken yesterday morning. The screenshot was, and you can see um, it counting the people as they come into the talk. Um, um, it didn't have enough data yet, but you can also the software will automatically draw heat maps and track maps. So you can, if you had a wider opening, you can see over the course of the day that everyone is only using the left side of the door. Um, and so the, it, the software is really great. It's not too expensive. I think it was less than 100 bucks for a perpetual license. Um, here are the vote boxes. Again, they are based on a Node MCU. Um, Shay was the one who came up with these ginormous metal electrical boxes, which makes RF fun. Um, so again, they are Wi-Fi based. Um, and to power them, we were originally thinking of powering them off of just a USB plug. But um, I had some of these PoE and uh, to PoE to USB um, adapters. And so I was able to power all the vote boxes off of PoE so I didn't have to run a, um, eth um, run a power to them because it, it's a lot easier running Ethernet than it is power. Um, the Wi-Fi uh, network, um, we run all of our own cable. We do not use any of the hotel's infrastructure. Uh, we run all of it ourselves. Um, there are over, there's over 7,000 feet of Ethernet, copper Ethernet used, and over 2,000 feet of fiber. Um, this year, we had to rerun our fiber because during COVID, they renovated the ceilings and chopped out a bunch of unused stuff, um, which meant our fiber got cut. Um, the fiber is not expensive. Um, I picked It's all pre-made, um, 50 meters in length. And I think it was like $35 per 50 meters of single mode fiber. Um, so it's not, it's, it's not a big monetary investment. It is a, it is a decent labor investment to install it though. Um, we got six servers, over 20 APs and seven switches. The APs this year uh, were all ruckus APs provided by my employer. Um, and this year we are also using a data plane box by Ruckus, 
what the APs will do is they will make a GRE tunnel back to the data plane and tunnel all client wireless client traffic back to the data plane box. Um, and from the rest of the network's point of view, all wireless clients look like they're coming from the data plane box. So when you roam between access points, you do not have to re-ARP um, across the network. And because they're all centrally managed APs, they all talk to each other and will hand off authentication sessions between access points. What all this means is you can roam between access points without dropping a single packet, um, which, which is not an easy feat to accomplish. Um, this is a this was a fun experience from 2019 when we were over when we had equipment in the other side of the hotel room other side of the hotel lobby too. This is a about an eight foot or not an eight foot. This is about a five foot diameter concrete pipe that runs underground for um, about a hundred yards between this side of the hotel and the other side of the hotel and. Um, Alan and a few other guys ran the fiber um, on, in this tunnel all the way to the other side um, so that we could have networking over there. Oh, okay. It, it's, it's a very large tunnel. Um, the displays. We were, going, we were going to use the displays and then there was some logistic issues. Um, the displays, them, um, displays themselves were going to be hooked up with a Raspberry Pi W running Firefox kiosk mode with a web page set to auto refresh from the Node Red server. And the Node Red server would write out a CSV that um, PHP would read and actually turn into a display so that um, we could push out messages so we could say, lunch will be served at XYZ, um, or evening events will be, or, or um, you know, in this room we will have this speaker, their topic is X, and the description is Y. Um, we are looking for next year to possibly get TVs and put them on mounts so that there'll be like a 40 something inch TV out, outside of each room that will show this information. Um, monitoring, um, so this is the Ruckus interface, um, um, specifically Zone, uh, this is what we're using. Um, we also use Libre MMS, NTOP MG, and of course Ruckus. Um, here is from NTOP MG, this was taken yesterday, so you can see the split of traffic between IPv4 and IPv6. By the end of the event, we'll hit about 1.5 terabytes of data transferred. Um, with the vast majority of that being a download, of course. Um, and one cool thing that NTOPMG does is it looks at packet headers to determine what um, protocol and what services were being used um, as an aggregate on the entire network. And so you can see here some of the top services. Surprisingly, the WireGuard traffic was, that, I was not expecting it to, to pop up quite that high. Uh, and this was taken yesterday around lunchtime. And again, this is the WAN interface again, lunchtime yesterday. Um, I think sometime late last night it peaked around 350 megs. So out of, th we were using a third of the connection. Um, but it, it's the upload that we really need and we were close to taxing it the, for the majority of the event. Um, here's more information. I will be writing up some incredibly detailed posts on my personal website. Uh, there's my email address if you'd like to contact me. And um, a lot of the information is up on GitLab, um, including the config files for the Node MCUs, the, all the glue scripts, all of the PHP, HTML for the displays, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and the one last thing that I wanted to show is OBS itself. So um, here is 
um, OBS and um, we have of course the speaker cam in the very bottom we're doing picture in picture we got the ad um, we got the sponsor information and then the presenters laptop there in the middle any questions yes Um, I think so um, so the capture we're capturing at 1080 um, I think it's the projector is the lowest common denominator I don't Jeremy are these 1080 projectors well then I don't know <laughs> Ah, oh, that's odd. Yes. So, <laughs> so we arrived Wednesday around eleven o'clock, eleven a.m. Um, and I think we didn't have it really truly ready until um, about an hour before the first talk on Friday. Yeah, and it's there's a lot of moving pieces, and it's also been three years since we've done this. Yes. Yes, they will. If you look up on YouTube, the Southeast Linux Fest channel, they will be appearing in the next two weeks. All of them. That is all up to the presenter. We we don't officially curate those yes no <laughs> so I I actually came up here about a month ago because I, I, I heard that they redid the ceilings. And so I came up here about a month ago and I looked and um, our f at least the fiber in command was, was, was about 10 feet from where I left it and was bundled up into a giant rat's nest of a ball. Um, and so right then I wrote off all of the fiber. Um, on Wednesday, we discovered that the drop for NOAA and the drop for the IX classrooms, that they had cut at some point and removed large sections of the Ethernet. So we, we did have to rerun that. Um, but not all of it. Um, there was a lot of our network drops that were still intact. And um, we, you were able to see some of the APs, like um, one sitting up here or one sitting in the back, but um, in most of the event areas, the APs are actually tucked up in the ceiling because uh, that's just where our cabling is. Um, so they don't do contracts anymore. So we just install it. After the event, we call them, come, come or move it. Um, or... Uh, no, um, the hotel uses a charter coax modem for their business center, and so the very first year that we were here, the charter tech just unplugged their cable modem, dropped a two-way splitter on it, and plugged it back in, and plugged ours on the on the splitter, um, and so um, 
that hasn't always been the case at all the hotels we've been at. Um, specifically, there were some horror stories from the Blake Hotel um, where they were not able to get Charter installed. Um, and so they had no, they had to run the entire thing off of Hotspot. But at least since we've been here, we have had Charter every year. Any other questions? Yes. It is, um, they are the top of the line and it's what my work uses for when we install properties. So for me to take um, 20 of them off their hands for a couple months wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, the, the APs, um, um, one model is $1,500 in AP, the other is $1,200 in AP. So definitely a lot more expensive than your your Walmart links a special. Well, thank you all for coming.